Welcome to No Longer Conformed. I'm Eric Garthy, and we are studying the book of Galatians, the uncorrupted gospel. In this session, we'll be looking at Galatians chapter 1 and verse 10 to chapter 2 and verse 10, a revealed gospel. Um, let's go back to verse 9 and look at that together with verse 10. Of Galatians chapter 1. As we have said before, so now I say again. If anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I still pleased men, I would not be a bondservant of Christ. The gospel Paul preached must not be changed. Why should what he preached be accepted rather than all the other new teachers in the churches in the Galatia area? Well, the apostle gave six reasons why his message is right. Speaking of the development of his ministry. First, he did not receive it from human origin. Look at verses 11 and 12. But I made known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to men. For I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. Paul received the gospel message directly from God. It was completely by revelation to him. And then second, he used to be zealous for the Jewish religion himself. Verse 13, have you heard of my former, for you have heard of my former conduct in Judaism, how I persecuted the church of God beyond measure and tried to destroy it. And I advanced in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries in my own nation being more exceedingly zealous for the traditions of my fathers. Paul was totally committed to Judaism. And what's the proof? He tried to destroy the Christian church. He surpassed most of the brethren in zeal, seeking to stop the new threat to the Jewish religion. And then third, it took God's direct intervention to change him. Verse 15, but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me through his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not immediately confer with flesh and blood, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me, but I went to Arabia and returned again to Damascus. Paul's story is like the Old Testament prophets chosen from the womb and called in God, in God's specific timing. God's, God revealed his son to him and commissioned him as apostle to the Gentiles. Acts chapter 9 tells us about this. We get the record in, in verse 1 of Acts chapter 9. And then Saul, as he was called before God changed his name to Paul, then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any who were of the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven, and then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? And then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And then the Lord said to him, arise and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, 
hearing a voice, but seeing no one. And then Saul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no one. But they led him by the hands and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him the Lord said in the vision, Ananias, and he said, Here I am, Lord. And so the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying. And in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might, so that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard many things about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my namesake. And Ananias went his way and entered the house. And laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. So when he had received food, he was strengthened. And then Saul spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. Paul did not discuss his calling with men. He did not go to Jerusalem to learn from the apostles. He began to preach what God revealed to him. And then fourth, after three years, he met with Peter. Look at verse 18. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and remained with him 15 days. But I saw none of the other disciples except James, the Lord's brother. Now concerning the things which I write to you, indeed, before God, I do not lie. Paul had been spreading his revelation. He went to Jerusalem and met with Peter and James. Verse 20 indicates that his preaching was the truth. The two leaders would have challenged Paul if his message had not been correct, the apostles' ministry instead was affirmed. Fifth, he pursued his call to the Gentiles. Verses 21 down to 24. Afterward, I went into the regions of Syria and Sicilia, and I was unknown by face to the churches of Judea, which were in Christ, but they were hearing only. He who formerly persecuted us now preaches the faith which he once tried to destroy, and they glorified God in me. The regions of Syria and Cilicia. Paul went to his, own, to his hometown of Tarsus and Cilicia. Acts chapter 9 tells us in verse 30, when the brethren found out, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him out to Tarsus. Then the churches Throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace and were edified. And walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, they were multiplied. And then Barnabas invited Paul to Antioch. Acts chapter 11 tells us, verse 19, Now those who were scattered after the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch preaching the word to no one but the Jews only. But some of them were men from Cyprus and Cyrene, who when they had come to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. Then news of these things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent out Barnabas to go as far as Antioch. When he came and had seen the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them all that with purpose of heart they should continue with the Lord. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and a great many people were added to the Lord. And then Barnabas 
departed for Tarsus to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for a whole year they assembled with the church and taught a great many people. And the disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. He participated in the growth of the first Gentile church. Notice that the churches of Judea, including Jerusalem, had not yet seen Paul face to face. They had only heard about him. And they rejoiced that the one who had persecuted the church now was preaching the gospel. And then sixth, 14 years later, he finally went to Jerusalem. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Then, after 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and also took Titus with me. And I went up by revelation and communicated to them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to those who were of reputation, lest by any means I might run or had run in vain. Yet not even Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And this occurred because of false brethren secretly brought in who came in by stealth to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus that they might bring us into bondage to whom we did not yield submission even for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. But from those who seem to be something, whatever they were, it makes no difference to me. God shows personal favoritism to no man. For those who seemed to be something added nothing to me. But on the contrary, when they saw that the gospel for the uncircumcised had been committed to me, as the gospel for the circumcised was to Peter, for he who worked effectively in Peter for the apostleship to the circumcised also worked effectively in me toward the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, received, perceived the grace that had been given to me, they gave me the, and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. They desired only that we should remember the poor, the very thing which I also was eager to do. Why did he go? The Holy Spirit told him to go. To Jerusalem. He met with the leaders only. He explained the gospel he preached and let them challenge its validity. And what was the result? A dispute over circumcision as they wanted Titus to submit to the ritual. And this occurred because of false brethren secretly brought in who came in by stealth to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus that they might bring us into bondage. It's Three points here that are important. First, the leaders added nothing to Paul's message. Second, the leaders confirmed he preached the same gospel they did. Salvation through faith and not by works of the law. And third, the leaders affirmed his calling to the Gentiles as Peter was called to the Jews. So what does all this mean to you, to you and me? Well, the gospel received in scripture is true. The salvation experience must be the result of a personal encounter with the Lord. Not your parents' religion, not by following a set of formula. Only the Holy Spirit can reveal the gospel for salvation. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 again. For by grace you've been saved through faith. And that, not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. This gospel is the true gospel. You heard this, it was confirmed by the Holy Spirit. Don't accept, don't listen to anything that's contrary to what you heard from God's word and confirmed by the Spirit. You have a great day.